What's up, people? Positive Paul. We're back here on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. I always got to think about what the date is for some reason. But upon quick review from the last video, trying to narrow down through the process of elimination, through a series of attrition, having to weed out the tares and dive into the muck and mire with these Satanists, these Edomite Jews that don't go away. They only plot, plan, recruit, and regroup. Now, we know with these conspiracy theories that something happened, needs to be covered up, and when they cannot get rid of the evidence, especially if they're humans, as opposed to uh, simply, you know, burning the records for MK Ultra, you know, our good buddy Richard Holmes back in January of 73. That was one of the things that came out of that hearing. And what, what's really, the way they confuse people about uh, what was done about MK Ultra is they use this, um, well, Blue blue Ribbon Commission. I don't know what you would call it. It was called the Church Commission. But if you actually examine that, really there was not much concerning MKUltra. It wouldn't be until 1977 when initially you've got this Admiral Stansfield up there saying, we're not sure exactly what happened. And mind you, this now is four years after Helms burned the records, but apparently a small cache uh, hidden somewhere in an undescript building in New York City was discovered by someone to cause the hearing in 1977. Some, I think it was September. And none other than our pal, our buddy, the bobblehead Joe Biden, was part of that. So was Ted Kennedy. And the point of it is that concerning MKUltra and who would be part of that, we know that the concern has always been something to do with Germanic ancestry, Celtic, and you could go as far as, yes, Native American, Indian. Now, with that being said, the main groups that were being used in this experimentation were tied to the Abrahamic blood link, the ancient Israelites, the ancient Hebrews, and part of the conspiracy, the mystery, concerns this ancient bloodline war. And whether its origins come from the Garden of Eden or even before that, the sons of God are involved. It's the hocus pocus, the black magic. And we know going back to um, all the way, Exodus, stay away from these observer of times and these wizards. And during the Old Testament, the Israelites needed, need to be constantly reminded of this. Now, if there's such a thing as time travel, where it's a nuts and bolts type hardware situation, as opposed to these rituals, these ancient Canaanite rituals, in Roman air, Greek air, I think they were called Dionysian, and this is what the MK Ultra rituals were based off of. Because you have that whole aspect. They all, you know, they, of course, they want to figure out why these Israelites were the way they were. And you can imagine back in ancient times, these Canaanites, these Perizzites, these Hivites, these Jeb Jebusites, the Amorites, so on and so forth, they would do these rituals and it involved chanting, it involved. Uh, drumming this rhythm but the locations they would do them at would be in areas where you would 
have this amplification of the sound. So if you, you can imagine how easily these Israelites would be duped when you're sitting there and all of a sudden you hear the this, you know, this this rhythm, this echoing, this drumming, this chanting, you're going to become curious. And then the weaker minds get roped into it. Hence, the Moloch and the Baal worshippers, as Pastor Stan puts. And I noticed, see, what, what happens is, is, I want to believe in this guy so much. But you have to remember, during these conspiracies... The ones that give them the legs, the support, they're, they're linguistical um, experts with this, uh, you know, uh, linguistical gymnastics. And they create, they, they create the vocabulary that we all adopt. And, and the thing of it is, it's easy to start to point out the frauds that at some point... The conversation, the representation, the information being provided has to have an intellectual twist to it. Something that the human mind, the brain can, it differentiates the, the BS from what is real. Now the thing back then is what's hidden now is, you know, the spiritual aspect concerning access to other dimensions uh, and whether or not the uh, post-World War II air during a series of trial and error, research and development created, we, you know, if they can have these supercomputers, Watson, all these, these other technological wonders, yes, then maybe they, through CERN, which I don't know why, Pastor Stan doesn't want to use the word CERN. I don't know what the big deal is. See, what, where you get lost in this, and I'm rambling now, is another introduction, but I could do a whole thing on Brookhaven. But let's get back to, I want to quickly go back over my situation leading up to how I come to really come to terms, to grips with the fact that I, I was handed over to these Satanists from birth, there's a lot of dynamics and aspects to it. The one is 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 my great grandfather's older brother, Carl Henry Lindner. As much as they hate this, and his buddies Bush Kissinger. The thing with me is, is he was born in 1875, and I've heard all these stories. And there's no men left. All right, it's usually these women that get up there that have these satanic ritual abuse stories, but none of them can give you any details. They can't even get beyond the year 1900. So again, it's a process of elimination. You could not be part of the Montauk Project in the years from 1980 to August 12th, 83, if you were born after, let's just say 1970. Because that would have put you at 10 years old in 1980. Now, I want to back up with the original MK Ultra survivors. The reason why you can't find any in males is, one, the time-tested method of driving someone crazy. Because these, some of these, these you know, God-given, beautiful human beings, they were hit so hard... And not understanding what was happening to them, that some of them may have unfortunately taken their own lives, and that this is a dynamic that they hope on. He's Satanist. Because look, the other thing about picking out the frauds, again, these they once you were part of this, they don't go away. There might be periods of rest, but trust me, especially if you're on the extreme end of this. Meaning you were part of the MK Ultra original and this Montauk garbage back in the early 80s. Um, they don't want to go through this. So there's the dynamic of the whole thing with the Matrix. And we'll get into that. But here's the thing with the original MK Ultra survivors. They would have been horribly treated. So their health from the get-go was compromised. And that's why they there's none around right now. But when you come to my age group, maybe, yes, the abuse was there, certainly, trauma-based mind control, but 
there was more care taken with my group for the reason being this was a mop-up operation. They were starting to feel comfortable that they had successfully eliminated a lot of these individuals tied to the Abrahamic blood link. Because that's what it's all about, folks. Separating people that do not do after the manner of these nations you shall possess. You will not behave like them. You're not going to get involved with these um, hocus pocus, you know, uh, ritual, ritualistic black magic garbage that Satan, th th without that, he's nothing. Because the fact of the matter of it is, when they fell, that's when they became these disgusting, spindly, um, you know, pale-looking gray aliens. This is the whole thing with Brother Esau. And, and again, I'm going to slow down because I want to get back to the issue of me on how this happened. And... I want to show show this. So, in the 90s, when I was going through workplace harassment, I was in a hostile work environment. Part of my lawsuit concerned constructive discharge, meaning the individual was put in a situation that, that the, the, you know, an average person would never, ever be able to, allow to be in that environment long term. It just was that way. Now, it doesn't matter, but what I want to show you is, is one, I, I, was, I found this just yesterday going back through this paperwork, and in the four years, it cost me almost $85,000. And what ended up happening was, is yes, I, I gave these... Uh, these lazy lying lizards, a black eye, exposed a lot, but the end of it was is they needed to make sure they destroy me because they knew they cannot kill me. It, it, this is going to play itself out. So what they do is when you get involved with these lazy lying lizard lawyers, once their back is against the wall, they're going to file motions to extend time periods for submission of closing arguments, documents, and they drag this out. So one of the, the more ridiculous, absurd, bombastic things back in the um, 1718 with this phony, targeted individual community, which is all long gone, the only character is left is this Jubilina Redeemed who won't even dare, dare communicate with me. But that's another story. We'll let that be for another day. They're gone, period. But there was all this talk. Oh, this class action lawsuit, this and that. It never was. It was all a bunch of hot air. Because once you, you get in there, that's part of the machine. That's how they wear individuals down. All right? So what ended up happening was, is I barely got half my money back. But... I will say that these lazy lying lizard lawyers, this guy Bradley K. Moore is up in San Diego. He did a very good job for me because what happened was is when you get these lazy lying lizards into court doing depositions, look, they're all over the map. They got they say one thing and then, you know, because their pea brains can't keep their um story together they lose it so what happens is that's why they got to extend stuff but this guy bradley picked up on stuff so by uh may 14th 2009 these assholes finally coughed up the money that they owed me and sent me packing on the street so okay so i i told you about what happened next trying to rent out of my apartment all right so at that time these implants are failing. I got blood coming out of my mouth. I got to go to the doctor. And because I am a former Marine, I go up to the San Diego VA. They're off of La Jolla Village Drive looking for help 
And little did I know, that's another good part of the buzzsaw to chew you up and eliminate any possible evidence of these Satanist crimes against children, against adults on a constant basis because they're living off one lie after another. So when you go to the VA, the first thing they do is they want to send you with these shrinks, okay? Because what happens is they do these things, they, you get progress notes. Here's what the very last progress note or second to last progress note before I had left the United States. I left the last time other than recently. I hadn't been back in since then. This is December 15th, 2016. They were shuffling around doctors. They were trying to do their best to um, essentially cover up these implants and not coming clean. But you see, I go there again, patient reports, several symptoms occurring over past months, high frequency ringing in ears occurs only when deep asleep, middle of night, wakes them up, but she puts not pulse, pulsatal. Okay, finding blood, blah, 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 picture, picture, results, sleep deprivation, out of it, electromagnetic radiation exposure, external source, blah, blah, blah. So these lazy lying lizards, before that, when I was explaining this, okay, they were doctoring up these progress notes to make me look crazy. And it culminated that I went on the attack. And remember, I had just, look, I'd gone through this whole lawsuit with my employer. So I, you know, I, I, I still had a lot, long way to go to figuring certain things out that I, if I had known back then to protect myself, I may not be in this position of, you know, near destitute. So I write a letter to the director of the VA, all right? And what happened was he immediately resigns, and then you get this guy, Garing, all right? December 8th, 2014. They come back with their mealy mouth garbage on uh, the, the 21st, 2015. And so what happens is I have to go on the attack. Now, the one doctor, the fixer, Javers, all right? this disgusting individual, all right? And cl behind closed doors, she mocked me. What happened was, is I needed to get my, um, my uh, progress notes amended, okay? And then the way this works is, you do it through official channels. And what happens is you make them respond. And what happens is, let's look at this. Let's look at this, okay. What happens is, after a year of this, going back and forth with these no good nicks in the uh, San Diego VA up in the La Jolla Village Drive, all right, I finally get them to start correcting their mistakes. This letter is in response to your min amendment, blah, blah, blah. Your request has been granted and amended, okay? So there you go. So... What happens is the, um, the, one, the one quack, Javers, she's not budging, all right? Because her job's on the line. Because if she doesn't do, you know, what the, you know, Luciferian hierarchy, all right, passed down through their minions, tell them what to do, then... She is going to be on the receiving end of a pink slip. Do I make myself clear? Now, what I want to show you is, where is it? You know, you would think I would try to be more prepared, but most of my videos are done on the spot when I think I could have some privacy. Okay, yeah, here, here it is. She doctored up my disability claim to make me look like an asshole, and then... The uh, Judge Levin, all right, with the screwball lawyers at the Disability Help Center over in San Diego, all right, this Javers character was supposed to fill out 
this form for me and she made me look like an asshole. I can't tell these people what to write. But what I want to show you is one of her mistakes. Look, look right here how my name is spelled. All right. L-I-N-D-E-R. I'm going to get back into this, what these assholes do. And these social media frauds too. That, uh, there's the proper spelling of my name. All right. Throughout my life. Anything I did, these administrative admin pogues, all right? These lazy lying lizards, these hybrids that were placed in positions that they would have been in the first hybrid group back in the 50s that can decide on who lives and who dies once they find out it's, hey, it's one of them. So what happens is first Javers has to establish Patient not seen at the VA prior to November 9th, 2012. That's when I started complaining about this garbage. Okay? So what she does is she doctors this up. I get hammered in, in, in my Social Security hearing back in 15. And remember, it's 2022. All right? The mere fact that I'm still here hassling these asshole Satanists should give you people a clue. I know what I'm talking about. Now, with these progress notes, okay, the other thing they do, these quacks didn't want to hear what I have to say. So what they do is they try to, they farm out their, uh, their psychiatrist uh, people, all right? So that way the VA can't be liable. They put one more firewall in between them being in hot water. And Trump didn't do shit. When he took over, I remember him signing the VA, whatever it was, CARE Act. Because during this period leading up, we all know how horrible across the board were the wait times for these poor Vietnam vet vets who were probably some in much worse condition than me. Granted, I got implants all up and down my body. But trust me, I understand there are people that suffered. I'm not the only one. So again, the VA, they because they can't do their job to mitigate their liability, all right? They farm out everything now. And that's the way government went, the bureaucracy, all right? You get these private companies that get these cushy government contracts. Do you see how the Edomite Jew works? And they use the rest of the global population that think, oh, come to America, the Jew buck. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the poor Mexican people have no clue of what they really is coming here in less than a year. All right. Now, they'll be prepared than most other countries. But when the lights are out and the stores are closed, what do you think? these Americans are gonna do. They're not, they're gonna just lose their minds, all right? But again, I say, I talk about Mexico because there's something to Mexico with these Satanists also, all right? Not just because that's where I'm at, because that's where my son's mom is from, here in Rosarito Beach. But the point is, MK Ultra, certain age group could only have been part of Montauk. Now, in 1979, you see this map here. I get moved from 223, Rethmeyer Court, Baldwin, Missouri, outside of St. Louis, to right here in a small town called Vernon, New Jersey. Now, when you look at this situation, what I now know is this town, this isolated area would be one of many throughout the United States and these would be staging grounds back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s for children that would be part of any type of government experimentation, no matter what, where it was all headed, okay? And the thing that we need to understand too about the reason why the original MK Ultra survivors, the group ahead of me, were horribly treated because drugs were administered to them, LSD, all that. But this was all part of another way to make 
the Abrahamic blood link look like they're the ones with the problem because in ancient times, these Canaanites knew what plants did what. You don't think they were slipping Mickeys into these uh, poor, uh, you know, Noah's, Noah's uh, children, right? And so on and so forth. Well, of course, of course. And so... And we know all about pharmacia and all this, you know? But the thing of it is, I was moved into position of November 1979, all right? We moved to New Jersey. Now, if anybody was going to be part of this Montauk project, they would have been positioned, if you draw a 360 circle coming up in through Boston, you've got all Connecticut below you, and we know what's right down there. Washington, D.C., people. So I am right here starting in November of 79. Right there is Montauk. Right here is what is called Hempstead, New York. It was Washington Square back in 1868 when my family, the Lindners, arrived. George Lindner and his four children and wife arrived from Bavaria, Germany. Now, I've already, all the, everything I'm repeating myself, so I don't want to get bogged down in that, but again, back to the Germanic ancestry with MK Ultra. They're not looking for Gentiles, all right? And you have this dynamic right here where these fl families that fled Germany, all right, they were not forgotten, all right? What was, go what was going on over in Europe, okay, before, you know, it took a while to wreck Europe and get their agents placed within, you know, their, their, their construct of how they, you know, wanted to do this. And yes, you know, we can, everybody loves to go back to the Albert Pike letter. Um, you know, there's a lot of dynamics to this, but back to the point on these kids that would have been involved from 1980 to 83. You would have found them in these isolated towns. And to get from here to Montauk would take me driving at least four and a half hours, probably. Now, Right in Hempstead, there's a place called the Nassau Coliseum. That takes at least two hours. I've been out there for concerts. The Islanders, uh, the hockey team, the Long Island Islanders are out there. And then you got the Rangers here in New York City. So anyway, the point is, I'm right here in 79. Now, I'm 13 years old. Now, what they have to do is, th th remember, this is a continuation the group that would have been part of those experiments through 80 and 83 were the ones, they were the holdouts from MKUltra. Now, again, I explain there will be gaps, periods of rest, because they have to let the victim heal, the body uh, try to grow naturally and stuff when they're doing this. And this is where... Unfortunately, these animals, these intellectual barbarians, have no, of course, remember, they're, they're stripped of any, you know, conscience feeling of doing anything. It's, it's, a, it's just the way it is, okay? It's, it's that once you're in that satanic sphere of influence, your mindset becomes numb to suffering. Uh, and that those types of um, things that just uh, for some people, you know, emotionally, hey, it's, you know, once, once, once you go that route, that's why what they call the second death. I'll, I'll give you, uh, uh, this is sad, I have to do this, but I'll tell you when the soul strips from the body, I'll use my old man as an example. By the summer of 2016, I'm complaining to my my parents that these implants, these Satanists hassling me, whatever they told you I did, I, you know, I didn't 
the commit no crimes intentionally or nothing. I may have been around some characters that were there to get me in trouble. It, but the end result is, is they didn't want to know me. And then finally, he screamed in anguish for me to make it stop. And when you hear the scream, it's the spirit leaving the body. And since then, he's, he, he, they mock me. It's sad. You know, we don't, you know, that's why, where you get, you know, this, um, uh, what they, what's the term? This, I, I forget now, but it doesn't matter. The point is, this is a real thing with real humans. Okay, the hybrid, they don't have to worry about that because there is no soul to take. A post-World War II hybrid has no salvation. And there's some up there now pretending to be Christians, pretending to be all kinds of things. But that's the, the, the another story. The human that got involved, especially these ones within the military industrial satanic complex. You know, I, I, I pushed these people. They just thought that, look, I wasn't supposed to come back. All right. That's the thing. Back in 19, August 12th, 83, when I show back up, that's the last thing that any of these Satanists ex expect it. And that's the last thing my parents expected that I wasn't coming back. That, you know, it, it would have been, hey, this poor kid out in Vernon died of alcohol poisoning. It's a shame, you know, we got to do more to save our kids, save our children from the uh, horrors of, uh, you know, these these uh, uh, drug peddlers. All right. And I'm no goody two shoes. All right. Trust me. All right. Because these implants, I don't have anything to help me. I drink beer. I'll smoke pot when I can, but I never have money. So it's like, you know, this is where in Mexico, people, when they can, they're poor too. They they help me, um, you know. And I try to explain to them on a just very fundamental level of what's going on. Some of them don't want to accept it. Some of them, they're interested, but it's again, we got to put food on the table. Um, you know, God bless these people here in Mexico. And uh, they just, you know, uh, like everybody else, the South Americans, no clue. All right. Canadians, okay. Yeah, there's some, but no. But um, Africa, they're in big trouble. You know, um, all the people in the um, South Sea Pacific, you know, they they walking around with the King James Bible and, uh, you know, saying, hey, look, I think, you know, we're, we're looks like we're at the end here because we're starting to see all these wars and rumors of wars and, uh, you know, uh, uh, father against son, daughter against mother, brother against brother. And it's all by design. We know that now in a modern world. So these individuals, all right, they all would have been isolated in these towns. And these Satanists do not do anything willy-nilly. Now, yes, there is the trial and error, the research and development that has collateral damage, loss of life, and the, uh, you know, Again, these intellectual barbarians that do this, these activities to try to, you know, make the world a better place. They don't care what the results are, who suffers. So the dynamic of Montauk is, is they reach the point where essentially to mind control somebody, understanding how electromagnetic energy works with the brain, the, the whole dynamic of the various, um, you know, brain wave patterns, delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma, uh, you know, um, how to manipulate those brain wave patterns and understand about memory. Because the biggest thing with conspiracy theories is no one can re ever remember shit, all right? You see this time and time again, where we get this uh, garbage out of Hollywood where they show these court cases, right? And these hotshot, lazy lying lizard lawyers are tripping up their, um, you know, during cross-examination on getting these people with their very fuzzy uh, memories. So there is something to eat them, electronic dissolution of memory concerning Delgado and Jolie West, all that. And hey, 
I, you know, the thing that these Satanists know is for the survivors, there's going to come a point where there'll be some type of recall, memory recall, where the subconscious, whether it's triggered, these people that do these regressions and things, I don't recommend that. Um, if that's that's capable to be done, well, look, has anybody seen it done? Just like with with um, the all the things, the conspiracy. My son's wanting his phone back. But um, all right, so now enough of this. I've done the lead up about where we're at. We're going to come back to this and we're going to get into why only four people concerning this Montauk project give it life, give it breath. But they don't know where these Montauk boys are. This is the most sickening part about it. Al Bielik was about the only one that elaborated on it to any length. All right, uh, yeah, Preston, yeah, yeah, well, okay. He didn't have much to say about it, neither did Stewart. But the sickening part is that these individuals are nowhere to be found. And it's not this cast of slippery, slimy, sleazy super soldiers and their leader, the baby Draco hybrid James Rank. And we're going to get all into that, too. So with this, I uh, bid you all a fair adieu. I've given you a lot of information. And now what's going to happen next is you're all going to be shocked sitting on the edges of your seat when I destroy this whole Montauk conspiracy.